friends. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Can, can you hear I can me? hear you. Okay, can great. you hear Let It Be In? So everybody, this is Patrick Casey. That's me, by the way. Patrick is a screenwriter in, in Los Angeles. Um, she wrote uh, quite a few movies, but everyone here knows Sonic the Hedgehog, so we'll, we'll stick yep. with that one. I do. Uh, hello, hello, Circuit. Good to see you, as always. This is Good to see you, Kurt. Hello, sir. <laughs> we, uh, this is day one of a middle school and high school film camp that we're doing all week long. So today we've, we've talked a little bit about we just did some lighting and camera perspective work. Lighting and camera perspective. We've done some storytelling and script writing concepts. We've talked a little bit about structuring your story and the protagonist and the story arc character. And every single one of these students is going to go off and at the end of this week, write a script and make their own film. Oh, wow. So I yep. want it to be so cool. All of them, almost all of them, it's going to be their first film. So I wanted to have you come on to talk a little bit about coming up with a story concept microphone. and writing a story. And we, we've delved a little bit into the structure of a story and they, they're going to have access to Keltex. Um, so they, they are going to have software to be able to write, write their own scripts. But I um, wanted to give them just a chance to talk to you as a, as a professional screenwriter to get a sense of how to structure a story or any sort of tidbits, advice you could provide in terms of rough ideas. We, we have some different settings that we came up with, like a fire station out in the woods, uh, a wood shop that one of their parents runs, um, a veterinary hospital, a, a karate studio. So lots of different opportunities for settings. Now we need to flesh out our characters and what happens to those characters. So how do you come up with story arcs for, for characters? Um, <laughs> lots of questions. That, uh, how long are the scripts that these guys are going to be writing? Five minutes? Um, well, I mean, anytime coming up with ideas for a film, I mean, it's the same. I mean, it's a good, it sounds like you guys were talking about, like, if you're making your own films, like thinking about what you already have access to and trying to use it, which is certainly like my friends and I started out making films in junior high and high school. And that was kind of, I mean, we would literally make a list of like the places we could go and shoot and the, the people we could get to be in the films too. And just like, what, what, who do we know that can act and then trying to come up with stuff that took advantage of the things that we had um, and ended up making I mean, a bunch of shorts and then eventually some like feature length 90 minute movies that got put out on DVD and you could rent it, you know, Blockbuster when we were, you know, 20, we were making stuff like that, which eventually led to getting involved in big Hollywood stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog uh, with a lot of steps in between. Ah, but thinking of something to write a script about, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have, have stories in mind already, but, you know, you want to... <laughs> I always think about, you know, what if, what, what if this, what if that, I'm thinking about that all the time, whenever I see, you know, anything in the news, like real world stuff or something that happens to somebody I know and think about like, what's the movie version of this, or even watching other movies, you know, sometimes I'm watching a movie and I think I know where it's going and it ends up being about something entirely different, but I'm like, you know what, I liked what I saw as the second half of this movie better, I'm going to write my version of of what that what this movie should have been is a lot of times where that comes from but that's obviously like features i mean for shorts it's, it's you know only a few scenes and there's some rules for writing scenes too just thinking about <laughs> thinking about what your actors are going to go through like make sure every character in every scene has something that they're doing something that they want you have two characters who each want something different and they're kind of in each other's way, that, that's a dramatic scene or a funny scene or both. Um, comedy and drama are heavily related. Um, <laughs> did you guys have specific questions? Okay, but I have a question. Do you want to hear my funny one first or my serious one? 
<laughs> I, either one. Okay, funny one. So, when's the last time you shaved? <laughs> um, a, a couple of months ago, probably. I, I shaved my beard every once in a while, then grow it back immediately. What's your serious question? Comic-Con style questions now, Patrick. Uh, the standard answer is a wizard did it, right? Just <laughs> I mean, it's funny. The rings, yeah, when I would tell friends, we had a version of the story, like Sega insisted that Sonic had to come from another world to this world. Like his world couldn't just be a forest on Earth. That was like a rule they gave us. And the studio wanted Sonic in the real world. We had to find a way to bridge that gap, so it was always going to be some sort of portal or teleportation. But I also found when I would tell friends that we were working on a Sonic movie, everyone was like, what about the rings? What are the rings? So we knew that we had to find a way to make the rings relevant, because I think that's what people wanted to see. People wanted to see Sonic get hit and all his rings go flying everywhere. And once we were like, oh, a portal, we should make the rings be portals. Because in some of the games, like, that's a big ring appears and you jump through it to get, like, a, to a bonus zone or something. So that just made me, made us realize that that's what the rings should be, the way that we travel between places so that they're, they're relevant in Sonic. Events to me. And then it did. Sorry, I had a bit of trouble here in that character. Could you maybe repeat it? So the question is, how long do movies usually take to make versus short films? Oh, much longer. I mean, it's funny. I've worked on, um, I mean, a short, you should be able to shoot probably. I mean, if it's like a scene, you should be able to sh shoot a whole scene in one, one day. If it's a few scenes, maybe you'd shoot them all in the same day or you shoot them in a few days depending on how long and complicated they are. One thing is that if you are shooting shorts and you're getting your friends to help, you're getting your parents or relatives to help, is to try and not waste their time and make it fun for them too, because that way they'll help you with your next one as well. I have a lot of experience with that. Um, but in a big feature, I've worked on, on feature length movies that we've shot as quickly as like 10 days, but that's faster than really you ought to do it. A big movie like Sonic, they shoot over the course of like two months. You know, you only shoot a, a, a couple of minutes a day um, because it's so complicated and you got to move all the trucks around and, uh, and all the special effects and stuff. You know, shooting anything with an explosion or stunts takes a long time. I mean, you guys probably won't be blowing anything up, but if you do, be careful. <laughs> we, we almost had an accident today alone, just uh, messing around with camera stuff today. Um, Sawyer, you have a question. It's a little bit of a convoluted one. Uh, it'll, ta it'll take a second to explain. As you probably know, the okay. the, the, the Sonic franchise has kind of went back and forth from being revered to hated, right? You know, with the games going back and forth. Mm -hmm. What was it like making a movie for a franchise like that? It was complicated. I mean, it was funny because, like, the way that my partner and I got this job is we just had a meeting with – in Hollywood, they have these things called general meetings, basically, where your agents send you out send you out just to meet people to see if you hit it off and see if you can find a project. And we had a meeting with uh, the producer of Sonic, Toby Asher, but we didn't even know the Sonic movie was in the works at that time. But he had a, we hit, like, we liked him and he liked us and he had a picture of Sonic on his wall and we just asked, we were just like, Sonic? Is there a Sonic movie? And, uh, you know, he told us like, yeah, but like, we already have writers, so calm down, guys. And we were like, okay, but when they fail, you should call us. We, Josh and I, my partner, we were both huge Sonic fans back in the 90s. Like, we each had, we, we when we were kids, we each had a Genesis and we loved Sonic. And... 
we basically talked our way into the job by just loving Sonic so hard. And I felt like we saw what the movie should be. It's just like, this is a superhero movie about a talking hedgehog, but it like, it, it should kind of feel a bit like a Marvel movie, but just like a little sillier and a little more cartoony. And once we got hired, that's when I really waded into the, uh, you know, fan message boards and stuff to kind of get a feel. Cause like I knew I loved Sonic, but I had never really participated in the fan community a whole lot. The internet didn't exist back then. And seeing how so many people like, you know, their favorite thing of everybody else hated, like it was like the fandom was very complicated and very passionate. So I tried to just kind of get a feel for, I mean, when you're making an adaptation in general, especially something like this where you like, it's not like a novel. You can't do a direct adaptation because the story of the Sonic games is so complicated and kind of doesn't make any sense. It contradicts itself and the different cartoons and the comic books. It's just trying to focus in on like, what is it that people like about this? Because clearly people like Sonic. There's something about Sonic that people like and try and figure out what that is and emphasize that in our version of it and not worry about the other stuff. Um, but it was funny because in this, yeah, we came out with that first trailer with like the ugly sort of rat like Sonic and everyone made fun of us so hard. And, you know, I was watching Colbert or The Daily Show or Saturday Night Live and they all were making fun of us that week. Um, and the, the whole Internet was so mad. But uh, me and Josh, we were mostly just excited. They were talking about, you know, people were paying attention. They were talking about the movie. And then we got to change the design. And I think it came out a lot better. Um, and the fans ultimately embraced it, which, I mean, thank, thank goodness. I, I was definitely worried that people were going to kill us, <laughs> but it worked out okay. It had to be very stressful, right, with the first release, and it just everyone going insane, haha, that's not good. It was stressful. I mean, the funniest part is because we were still trying to, you know, get other movies and doing meetings and stuff, and in every meeting during that time, you know, the executives at other studios would be like, so, Sonic, how's that going? And, you know, we would be like, well, I mean, I think when people see the movie, they're going to like it, even though everyone's making fun of it now. But I, I think the movie's good. It's going to work. And they'd be like, sure, good for you. And no one, no one believed us. But we, we were right. <laughs> it worked out in the end. Um, but it was, I mean, making movies is a stressful job because it's high stakes and big swings from positive to negative and back again. So you got to try and stay even keeled and not get too caught up in any of that stuff. It was a great movie, by the way. Uh, thank you for saying that. Thank you. I have a question. Go ahead. So my sister was really big Sonic fan, and um, she noticed that arms aren't blue in the yeah, um, that Sonic's arms. Yeah, it's Sonic's arms were always tanned before, but I think that was just to make it easier to see them with the more primitive graphics on the Genesis. And I mean, that wasn't up to me, but the you know the director I think just decided that it, like it, his design made a little more sense with full blue arms, and I, I like the way the blue arms look too. But I understand some people prefer the tan arms. Arlie has a question over here. So I'm having a little trouble hearing you. So, Patrick, the, the question is, was the original Sonic design some vast conspiracy to get the internet talking, and then you could come back and do the redesign to make everyone happy? She, she said, was it on purpose how bad the original design was? I don't think so. If it was a vast conspiracy, I wasn't in on it. Um, and they also tricked me. I mean, when I saw the design, I was like, is this really what we're going with? But I, I couldn't tell them to go back and change it. And then, but I still didn't, I was surprised by how much everyone freaked out. Um, 
Because I'd always just been like, he's got to be cute. He's got to be cuter than this. Like, we, he needs to be somebody you want to pick up and give him a hug. That's what I kept telling him. But again, I'm, I'm the writer, so it wasn't really up to me what he looked like. Yeah, I think it was a good movie. I mean, it's funny when you make a movie because it's like you work on it for so long and as, as a writer in a big movie, like in television, the writers are really in charge and I've done television shows too. And on that, I was the boss and I really got to decide what the ultimate result was. Um, but in movies, the director's in charge and the writers, you can make suggestions, but that's really ultimately all you can do. And I remember, you know, at times during the process, you're like, this is good. And then other times you're like, oh, this isn't going right. This movie's going to be bad. And then you're just like, I don't even know what it's going to be. And with this movie, I, when it was done, I remember watching it with my girlfriend a few days before the premiere. I had a copy I could watch at home and watching it with her and kind of making the decision. Like, I was like, no, nah, I think this is good. <laughs> but then we still didn't really know until opening weekend to see how the audience reacts because if the audience likes it then it was good and if the audience doesn't like it it wasn't good ultimately the audience is who it's for it's not for you it's 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 for the audience so i would say that about your films and making your own films guys is making shorts i do like my friends and i we made a lot of stuff and and we would show it to people like you you make things finish them it's like so keeping keeping your it's good to be ambitious, but it's, it's even better to finish stuff. So like set a goal you can do, make a short, finish it, show it to your friends, show it to your family, like observe their reactions too. So, cause the more you do that, the more things you finish and the more times you get to see it with an audience, the more you learn what's working, what's not, what you do well, what you don't do well. And you can learn from that and get better. Like a lot of people, like never really make anything or like they never finish anything. They're working on one script for years at a time. And a lot of times, you know, if someone's like, Oh, I've been working on this screenplay for five years. What can I do? Usually like if they've been working on it that long, I'm like, take that, put it in a drawer, start a new one and then come back to that one later. Cause like right now you're probably too caught up in it. Like you need fresh eyes. And the best way to do that is to switch projects actually. <laughs> but like, or just like, get it done call it done let people read it and then and then see what happens from there um but like you, you gotta learn from audience reaction when you're working on a project like that for a while do you ever grow disdain for the thing you're making like, disdain for the thing I'm making? Like, you, you, like, even if you know it might be good, you're like, I don't want to see this anymore. Oh, yeah, obviously. I mean, but that's also because, like, now I'm a professional. This is my job. So definitely some days I'm just like, oh, I'm sick of this. I don't, I don't want to do this. I mean, a lot of times, yeah, because it's like you have, especially when you get frustrated, you're arguing with the people you're working with or, or just something's not working. Yeah, you, you want to move on to some fresh idea. Uh, but you can't because <laughs> this is your job. So it's, I mean, it's just like, I mean, you guys, I'm sure some days you get up and you don't want to go to school, but you just got to do it. And you got to find a way, especially in this business, because you got to be enthusiastic and you got to find the joy in it. And sometimes it's hard to find, but like that's, you got to try and reorient yourself emotionally and get yourself excited about it again, even when you weren't to try and try and find the excitement so that you can get all the way to the finish line. Because if you lose the joy, it's not going to be good in the end. I mean, but even though you are going to lose the joy sometimes in the middle along the way, but you got to find it again. Um, but that's definitely part of the process. It's a good question. Sorry, what was that? The question is, when you're playing a character, do you feel like you're stepping into their shoes a lot? Like, like maybe from the writing perspective, are you ever trying to like think like, okay, I'm Sonic and I'm doing this thing? Like, oh, absolutely. I mean, you always kind of want to think through 
think through what it would be like to be each character in a scene, even characters who don't seem like they're important, a bad guy's henchman or whatever. Like if they if they're there in a scene, they're a character, and you want to you kind of want to back through like. I, I, I'm also an actor, even though I haven't really acted in anything in years, but I used to, and I still have those skills. I took acting classes when I was in school, and I think that helps you as a writer. And I think if you're an actor, it helps to learn to write for that reason, too, to, like, look at things from different perspectives. Um, but for each scene you write, ideally, yeah, you should go through a... Read your script out loud to make sure the lines sound okay when someone says them. Sometimes you'll give a line to an actor and there's kind of no way to say it because um, you haven't said it out loud and realized like, oh, this sounds clunky as hell. Um, but you should also think through each scene as though you're the actor playing this character, then think through as though you're the actor playing that character and think about, is there something here for me to play? Are there emotions going on beyond just the words he says? And like sometimes just like looking at it from each perspective, you'll realize that like this this character is just standing there doing nothing and they should either get out of the scene or give them something to do. Um, but and yeah, it's, it's like you want to think about it as though you're each character. I mean, think about like what they want, what their background is somewhat. I don't really get that deep into like writing origin stories for everyone like some actors do, but. But I definitely think about what they're all feeling. And I spend a lot of time with Sonic, too, thinking about, like, what does this, what's this guy feeling? What does he want? You know, that was, that was a big challenge with the movie. He's like a super-powered hedgehog. How do we make him somebody that people can relate to and uh, give him, like, a, something that he wants that people can understand and, 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 and feel for him, too? I mean, in the movie, we ultimately kind of gave him the idea that he'd, He's lonely and he's like all on his own and he wants to participate in human society. So we took a guy who has superpowers but made him, he doesn't have the thing that everybody in the audience has, which is that they have friends and can go to school and have a family and Sonic doesn't have any of that stuff. And that, that's what he wants. Um, do you ever, I mean, did he make any other I don't know, maybe not any that you will have, have seen. Um, <laughs> a cult hit many years ago called Hey Stop Stabbing Me that actually we're gonna have a new, a new Blu-ray edition of it um, coming later this year. Movies called, I made a, some National Lampoon movies, National Lampoon's Dorm Days and its sequels. I made a TV show called Golan the Insatiable, which was on Fox. Have any of you guys heard of Golan the Insatiable? One of, uh, do you guys ever watch any of the Sunday like animated shows on Fox, The Simpsons and, and, and stuff like that? Uh, so Patrick here was the producer of one of those shows for a while that he's talking about right there, Go Land the Insatiable. I think it was the funniest animated show that Fox has ever had, but that, that's, that's just me. I, I was very sad when that show got canceled. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I also think it was the funniest. I think you can actually watch it on Hulu still. If any of you guys are interested in checking that out, Golan the Insatiable. It's about like a uh, heavy metal demon from another dimension who's gotten stuck in a small town in Minnesota and just terrorizes the, the nice people who live there. So we did talk a little bit today about the history of film. And so we talked about Walt Disney and rotoscoping and Gertie the Dinosaur. Yeah, that's probably not, not, not a, a good idea. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit uh, versus Mickey Mouse and the whole lawsuit there that led to Walt Disney's dominance. So they, they learned a little bit about animation and how all of that, that is done, but maybe you can talk a little bit about what it's like to produce a hand-drawn animated show, how much work goes into that. Yeah, making an animated show is interesting because it's sort of the opposite of making a live action thing. Because when you're shooting live action, you got to write the script and then you basically get one chance to shoot every scene. You get your actors and everybody on location. You shoot everything, and then you got to edit it together, but you only have what you shot. When you're doing an animated show, you write the script, and you record the actors' voices first. Then the artists make uh, storyboards, which are basically you know still drawings of everything that's going to happen, and you sort of edit it together with the sound first you have what's called a radio play which is just the sound like for an episode of the simpsons you record all the all the voices you make it as a half hour radio play which you can listen to and see if the jokes are funny and if the jokes aren't funny 
you have a chance to to change them and record the lines of the actors again. Then yeah, then you do the storyboards and you edit it together so it's like a non-moving black and white. It's just like pictures that go with the sounds. Make sure that's funny, and then you send it to the animators to like make it all move and fill it in with color and stuff. But like you have all these chances when you're making a cartoon to make sure it's working in the editing and, and you can still change it. Uh, the, the further along you get, the more expensive it gets to change it. So you want to catch things early, but you do have the chance to like improve the jokes as you go along. Um, so, it, and it takes a long time to make a cartoon. So you get a lot of chances and you'll have a bunch of episodes kind of happening at once, but you know, each one is like one stage past the other. So you'll get like the full animated version of this one while you're looking at just like the, it's called the animatic. That's where it's just black and white and just still photos with the sound and then the radio play of this one and then just the script of that one. Um, and it's a lot of fun to do to make a, a cartoon that way. I like it. And with Sonic, because of the fact that the movie's live action, we shoot James Marsden and Jim Carrey and it's too late to change what they did. But we can still change what Sonic says and does in any given scene kind of late into the editing process. So it's a combination. It's going to come out in April of next year. We have a date already, April of 2022. And we already shot the movie. They just finished shooting it um, a couple of weeks ago. So now um, we're editing it together and recording Ben Schwartz doing the voice of Sonic and the animators are hard at work putting it all together. And this one's going to have more special effects and more big action sequences and stuff too. It's all, it's a, it's a bigger, more spectacular, more epic movie. And I think it's going to be really good. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, the, is it like, um, is it weird to have it be like, like you have a whole bunch of these smaller known movies and then have this suddenly huge movie everyone's heard of? What's it like to have a hit, Patrick? Because I'd like to know that myself. <laughs> it is weird, but it's nice to finally have a hit because I've been in the business for a long time. I mean, Kurt and I worked together 10 years ago um, after I'd already than that it was 20, 2008 when we were working together oh, man yeah uh and because i'd already made movies at that point but they hadn't been hit so i had to go back and get other regular jobs too but now that i have a hit now all the studios take us more seriously and we've got some other big movies in the pipe as well um nothing that i can quite tell you about i think That is correct. Um, is it already known that it's going to be coming out? Like, is there trailers and stuff for it yet? Or is it just kind of like, it's still... Um... There's no trailer yet, and there's no poster yet, but it has been announced. Like, people know that it's going on. Um, and I'm not sure when the trailer is going to come out, but, I mean, I'm expecting it this fall sometime, probably, or possibly into the, like, by December, I'd expect some kind of trailer, or at least posters. Um, but because of the fact that we have to do all this animation, like you can't really make a make a trailer until they've got some scenes with the fully animated Sonic in there, and possibly Tails and possibly Knuckles. So uh, we're we're just calling it quits for the day here. It's almost three thirty. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, but if you have any final advice to to everyone here about writing a script Bye, of how to go about doing it. Um, how to do, take an initial idea and develop it into a full story. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the best way to do that? Like back when you were doing stuff with your high school buddies and you had an opportunity to talk to someone who had just written a, mil a film that made over $300 million, what would you have wanted to know from them? It's <laughs> a good question. I mean, the main thing is like you guys have, have been watching – TV and movies and internet skits and stuff your whole life. You just got to like absorb that info. I mean, you're a, a generation younger. Probably a lot of the stuff that I think probably seems old fashioned and weird to you guys. Cause you guys are the future. You're the next generation. Like you, you know what the audience needs to see. Cause you, you, you know what you want to see. Like imagine the audience is someone like you and make something that that person would love. Think about your audience and make them happy. Show them a good time. Make sure that when, when the film's over, they're laughing and, and, and they're glad that they watched it. Okay, that's really good advice. I hope that 
everyone was listening to, to what he just said. Did, 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 did you hear it? He said, make something that you would want to watch too. Okay, so when we're thinking about our scripts tonight and when we come back with a little bit more ideas, think about something that if you, what is a story that you could tell maybe at your house or just a local park or some of the places that we talked about that you could easily make here that is a story that you would want to see or that you would think is funny or you would think is, is interesting and go in that direction with your script, okay? Any, any final thoughts, Patrick? Uh, other than thank you so much for taking the time out to join us. I know it's right between meetings. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, uh, do you have a final question? Can you say hi to Patrick the Starfish for me? I'm very sure you two know each other. <laughs> I will. I'll say. I'll say hello to Patrick the Starfish. Oh, and last thing. Wait, never mind. <laughs> All right, but and all you guys. Don't be afraid to, to think big and dream big because I because you can do it. You can do anything you can imagine. Like listen to Kurt. You guys like work on these films. I bet you can make something awesome with a little hard work and imagination. But go ahead. I have the original Sonic game on our Wii. I don't know why they transferred it over to Nintendo, but I can play it. Great. <laughs> you should definitely play. I, I, I have it on the Wii, too. I play it. Um, I, I still play Sonic all the time. It's really fun. Hi, Patrick. Well, Pat, Patrick, thanks so much for, for taking some time out. Really appreciate Hi, it. And uh, we'll, have a, we'll be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m., okay? Soon. I thought you were someone else. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Patrick. Bye, Good to see you again, buddy. Bye. Good to see you, guys. Fly away. Bye.